Viewers should be warned, the following video is a discussion of racism and violence against women, particularly Indigenous women. I implore you to research into the history of Indigenous people in Canada, as well as recent events and statistics in your own time if the video's contents become too disturbing. The subject of this video comes from a place close to home. On February 13, 2014, a young Inuit woman named Loretta Saunders disappeared. She was a student working on a thesis in criminology concerning missing and murdered Aboriginal women at St. Mary's University here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Her car was found with her two roommates near Windsor, Ontario. They had neglected to pay rent to her and she had recently told them to leave. On February 26th, Loretta's body was found on a median near Salisbury, New Brunswick. With those likely to have killed her in custody, Loretta's case may differ from nearly half of the homicides against Native women that remain unsolved. However, this is little consolation for the cost of Loretta's life, as well as those like her. She is the third Native woman to be found dead in 2014, following five more murders in the fall of 2013. For hundreds of years, Native people in Canada have been victims of genocide, assimilation, poverty, and a lack of basic human rights, including atrocities such as residential schools and eugenic practices such as forced sterilization. Native women in particular deal with a sickeningly high rate of violence. I remind you of the residential or boarding schools for Indigenous children. We like to think of this as being part of a distant past, but the last of these schools was closed in only 1996. I remind you that of the 150,000 children who passed through the system, mandated by the 1876 Indian Act and several Christian churches, at least 4,000 children died while in these schools. And while a public apology was offered in 2008, it does not detract from the years of cultural isolation, sterilization, and physical and sexual abuse these children faced. Mass violence against Indigenous people did not end with the closing of residential schools. On February 22, 2002, Robert Picton was apprehended and charged with two accounts of first-degree murder, and was eventually convicted of killing six women, though he is thought to be responsible for dozens of murders, up to 49 by his own admission making him the most infamous and prolific serial killer in Canadian history. Upwards of 22 bodies were found on Picton's farm following his arrest. All the victims were women. Over half were native. Picton's victims were taken from Vancouver's downtown east side, an area known for its street-based prostitution, injection drug use, and high population of immigrant and native people. It is considered Canada's poorest postal code. Statistically, Aboriginal women 15 years and older are 3.5 times more likely to experience violence than non-Aboriginal women. Spousal abuse is three times higher. One-fourth of Aboriginal women had experienced spousal abuse within five years of a survey conducted in 2004. 54% have suffered family violence. 44% have feared for their lives because of this violence. 27% have faced 10 assaults or more. Aboriginal women are seven times more likely to be victims of homicide. 45% of homicides remain unsolved. Aboriginal women between 25 and 44 are five times more likely to die as a result of violence. Homicides of Native women are more likely to go unsolved. Six out of ten violent crimes against Aboriginal people go unreported. A new database was recently released, made from a seven-year study of cross-referencing police reports, court records, and public sources to create a list of missing and murdered women in Canada. 824 Native women are featured on that list, up significantly from the 582 estimated by the Native Women's Association of Canada. The sources to these statistics are included in the description. Lastly, consider the Highway of Tears, a poignant example of media coverage, or lack thereof, surrounding murders of Native women. The stretch of Highway 16 that runs between Prince George and Prince Rupert, British Columbia, is notorious for missing and murdered women. Since 1969, official records show that 18 women have disappeared or been killed along that road, though the estimates from Aboriginal communities is as high as 43. Over half the official victims are Aboriginal women. Many Native communities are connected by the highway, and with no standardized transportation between them, young people have been known to hitchhike from one community to another. Though the hitchhiking actions of young Native women are fueled by issues of lack of safe transportation in an economically depressed area, one brought on by centuries of oppression, responsibility is placed on victims by stopping hitchhiking and therefore mobility. It wasn't until the murder of a white woman in 2002 that the highway's reputation was picked up by media sources nationwide. It was only then that a wider police investigation was launched, when no killer was found, the highway and its victims sank out of public consciousness again. This abuse cannot continue. 
Despite a petition with over 23,000 signatures from the Native Women's Association of Canada calling for a national public inquiry, Prime Minister Stephen Harper and the Conservative government have resisted any call to action, settling instead to put money towards the Royal Canadian Mounted Police's National Centre for Missing Persons, which does not specifically focus on missing and murdered Indigenous women. This video is only a tiny effort to raise some awareness to the ongoing racism and gender-based violence going on in Canada today. As I cannot claim any authority regarding the needs of Native women, I am sending you to those who can. Below, I've listed some organizations for and by Native people, including the Native Women's Association of Canada and the Inuit Women of Canada, who would appreciate your social and financial support. Today I leave you with an excerpt from a poem by Native poet Joy Harjo. This is from I Give It Back, a poem to get rid of fear. I take myself back, fear. You are not my shadow any longer. I don't hold you in my hands, in my eyes, my ears, my voice, my belly, or in my heart. My heart. My heart. My heart. My heart. Come here, fear. I am alive. And you are so afraid of dying. I'm Jeanne Prouvert from Les Amis de l'ABC, and I thank you for taking the time to watch.